Now, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors. I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> like unexpected in the shadows. I like to put, actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know, you ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? And <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today we're, we're going to be working on some red boots. I found these red cowboy boots at a friend's house and I just got so excited. I said, oh, I, I've got to paint these. You know, I'm, one of the really cool things about this show is that it's, real, it's interactive now. So you can go to GiveYourWallSomeSoul.com and post pictures and talk to me and uh, interact with tons of other artists on the site. It's great. Or if you just want to jot a quick note, check me out on Twitter. Just all you have to do is Twitter Shannon Grissom and, and you'll find me there. It'd be great. Okay, so what are we going to do today? This is a really interesting subject, uh, these red cowboy boots. They're actually cowgirl boots. <laughs> Uh, they, um, I was at a friend's house taking pictures of other things and I saw them on, you know, in the living room and I was like, oh, they're gorgeous, I've got to paint these. And the cool thing about this is that they're backlit. So when you have an object that's backlit, you really can't see the detail in the front and, uh, because you're, the light just blows out everything else. So we're going to have some fun with this. Well, we always have some fun. Where do you start? Well, I'm going to start in the background. You can, you can do it systematically where you start back to front and left to right. And, and it is my intention to start off in a logical fashion. But, you know, five minutes into the show, that, you know, that's going to go in a different direction. But that's where we're starting. All right, so I'm going to start at the very top. And I love that yellow ochre on their floor. It was gorgeous. Now I had one of my bosses, she built a new house and, and she said, she, she said, I'm not putting carpet in. I'm going to have a concrete floor or I'm going to have a tile floor and I'm going to get a rug from Home Depot and, and when it gets dirty, I am throwing it out. <laughs> and um, this gal Annette, now she didn't say that, she lives out in the country and it has this beautiful tile floor. It's just gorgeous. Great patina. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm mix, mixing some yellow ochre and some carbazol violet. And I'm going to put that up at the very top. I'm going to use a pretty good sized brush and just scrub it in with some medium. Oh, that's pretty. Probably a little too much medium. There we go. And I'm going to scribble today. I scribble every day. But uh, a painting this size in this amount of time, you're going to have to move quickly to get it covered. I'm trying a new canvas from a new manufacturer, and uh, I, I love the way it's taken the paint. This is great. And I can't say who it is on TV, but if you want to find out later, go to my website, <laughs> GiveYourWallSomeSoul.com, and I'll, I'll post it there. Okay, so it's darker here, almost, almost like a sunset where they're dark on the top and lighter as you get down toward the horizon. All right, that's good. Now we need some a uh, little bit lighter ochre. 
So I'm going to pull some of this down. I was tempted to put my dirty brush in there, but I want to keep that pile clean and do my mixing down here. All right, so then I need to wipe my knife. That's good. A little more medium. You know what? I think I better wipe my brush first. Otherwise, it's going to be a little muddy. There. Don't have to get a clean brush. Just wipe it off a little bit. All right, so it's lighter here. And I'm going to scribble it right up into this. Uh, and how far does that go? It goes to about, I'm just kind of drawing myself a little imaginary line here so I know where to take it. Because if I don't, I get carried away. There's smooth transition of scribbles. I'm a little careful, a little more careful as I get close to the top of the boot, but not, not all that careful. That's happy. I tried, you know, as far as the composition, I tried this on, you would think it would fit better on a rectangular piece. I just didn't like the composition. I played with it for a long time. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try the square. And I like it. That's happy. Let's see how far do we want this to come. Maybe, maybe right here on either side. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. One thing I'm doing with these brush strokes is, you know, if you outline something like this, that's fine so that you can, you can cut in there and get, get close. But you don't want this outline here to look like your brush went in toward the boot and hurried up and run away. And, we, and you don't want these halo effects. So it's, it's fine to outline that and then just smush it around a little bit. That's a good technical word. Um, but pull it away from there so it's not obvious what you just did. Okay. And I'm going to lighten that up just a little more. So I'm seeing where, how far down does this go before it really starts getting some light in? It goes to about right here. I'm going to make this uneven. I don't want it even on either side. Too symmetrical would be boring. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of cad yellow deep to this, just a little bit. Let's see what that does. That's kind of gross. <laughs> but let's see. Let's see. You know what? It's 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 not a color I would normally. Uh, I'm going to get in trouble here, and it's real early in the show for that. Um, not a color I would normally pick, but for this particular point. It's perfect. <laughs> we could do a contest and have people name this color. <laughs> you guys can Twitter me with, with good names for this color. That'd be great. I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back and there's going to be all kinds of tweets about this. All right. Let me set this down. I used to not even put this on my palette, but you know what? There are times that when that's just, you know, I didn't wipe my knife, so it really didn't make any difference at all. And I didn't wipe my brush. Whoops. All right, so I pulled that over. I'm going to pull a little bit more of this down because I want to go into some straight color with my dirty brush. There we go. A little bit more on the yellow side. And I know I should cool this down a little bit with its complement. I mean, that's what, that's what everything that you've learned would tell you to do. But I am not ready to do that. I'm going to leave this. I'm, I'm in a pretty warm mood today, and that's how this thing's going to stay. So 
So there's things you know that you're supposed to do and things you do just because you feel like it. That's why we paint. Okay, so we have a little bit darker there. Slight change there. Ooh, we, we need to go into this nice little Rodney Dangerfield cad yellow. Uh, or the Indian yellow, that would be great. Maybe it's time to pull some of that out. All right, I'm going to do that. There is a danger with this going over the top, but we'll add a little white to it and it'll be all right. Oof. Okay. Let's see how this does. Oh, yeah. Now, the reason this can be so bright here, that's gorgeous, is that I will be adding some light in and it won't, it won't overtake, hopefully. You know, you, every time you hit the canvas, you're going to be in a different place. You never know where, where a person has been or what their day is like before they start painting. And so it, it definitely influences what you create. And mine's been a little bit of a wild ride lately, and I think that's what this painting's going to be. Okay, so I'm going to start adding some light in here. I'm just going to grab a whole bunch of white and use a dirty brush and see what happens with paint that's already on it from what we've been using before. I'm hoping it'll work. It doesn't always work, but I, I think this will be a good, good way to start. I do want to throw in some of that turquoise over the top, but I want to get, because I do see in this, in the background, I do see some turquoise right in here, but, I, but I'm going to put that in later. I'm, I think I want to put the light in first. So I'm going to keep it warm. There we go. And the very lightest light goes all the way down here. God, I love this canvas. Whoops. A little bit of dirty, dirty brush here. If I don't tell everybody to go buy it, could I, could I mention the canvas? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> this is really, really good stuff, so definitely, definitely come by my site. Okay, what, what makes a canvas that it's grabbing the paint? It's got a great, great absorption. If you get a bad ground, it, uh, it almost repels it. I don't know if you've ever tried to paint a house and not prepped properly, and the paint is sticky and it doesn't want to do what it's supposed to do. Well, you know, if you get cheap canvas, that happens too. So, it does make a difference. Now, do I, am I, uh, some people will only paint on linen. Um, for me, that's just a personal preference. I like, I like cotton duck. And cotton, du <laughs> cotton duck is not a, not a fluffy plush toy. <laughs> it's a, ty it's a type, of <laughs> type of canvas, as opposed to linen. Some people really like the, the weave in linen. <laughs> I got a cotton duck at home, though. Okay, so that's light there. To just goes to just about right here. Ooh, that's nice. 
A little bit of light on this side. I need to bring some more white over. Don't want to contaminate up there, so I'm moving it over here. All right. I'm putting it down first, and then we're going to make the transition a lot softer in a minute, or two, or three. Just want to get the paint down first. This is really good exercise for your arms. <laughs> I, I definitely have more developed muscles in my, my right side. You have to try painting with your left hand. That's, that's, always, <laughs> that's always interesting. OK, so we got this much covered. We want a softer transition. So that's going to require the brush, a little bit of blending here. I'm just going to take the dirty brush and scribble this together so that the transition's not real obvious. You could do a nice blending where there were no strokes. I like the energy that's here. But I could show you how to do that. Let's say you just thought this was a little too messy and it bugged you. Now, I, I, like, I like the energy that's starting to, to happen because it really uh, it reminds me of all the texture and stuff that's going on in the floor. But let's say this just bugged you. <laughs> and you wanted something that was just really a lot more mellow, then what you would do is take a nice little soft brush, a little happy brush, and make sure you just lightly, very light pressure, and wipe your brush like a couple strokes and then wipe. If you don't, you're going to make mud. I'm going to start at the top. I'm not pressing too hard because I want to leave some of the little excitement back there. But it just softens it up. Nice little blending. Notice the rhythm. Couple, couple strokes and then wipe your brush. If you don't, you'll find out. <laughs> It'll just be mud. There, that's nice and soft. Spending a lot of time on this background because it's important. Some people just go for the main object and then just ignore the background. But it's, it's the background, it's the neutrals, it's the interstitial space that make the rest of it sing. I'm happy with that. That's nice. I could play with this a lot longer, but we'll never get anything done. So that's a good start for that. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, shore up the bottom. It's a lot darker down there, so let's see. What am I going to do? Make some uh, violet in the shadow. And <clears throat> I'm just adding a little more Carbazole Violet to the mix we had at the top. And I'm going to get a clean brush for this. Let's see. I just got some new brushes. They're hog's hair bristles. And I like them because they really, really hold the paint. Uh, I've tried a lot of different brushes, and these these seem to just hold the paint and they and they perform well under a, a kind of a I'm hard on brushes. As a kid I was hard on shoes, well probably as a as an adult too, but also hard on brushes. And these these pass the Shannon test. Okay. 
So I'm going to get these shadows in before I forget where they go. I lifted the canvas up just a little bit so I could reach the bottom. That's beautiful. Okay, so how far does this shadow go? There's a little bit of light under there, so I want to leave that space. I know it's kind of hard to see that one little area there. Let's see. This goes right under here, and you can tell that toe's up a little bit because there's no shadow there. The owner of these boots, Annette, a friend of mine, is an amazing entrepreneur. I gotta tell you the story of her. Okay, so her daughter breaks her arm, I mean, plays a lot of sports, has had a ton, a ton of injuries over the years. And so she's used to rushing her to, to the doctor and, and uh, casts and all kinds of stuff. So she came up with this great business where she made um, cast covers to, <laughs> to go over. I mean, I, I mean, hey, you know, this is talk about somebody making lemonade out of, out of a tough situation. So, um, so now she's got this incredible cast cover business and she's, she's doing really well. It's awesome. Okay. This is dark hair. I'll add some more little ochre down here, and we'll, we'll just fill in these little spots. I am, though, before I lose it, I see a little, bit of, a little bit of light with a little bit of blue right in one little area under here. If I don't put this in now, I'll start painting, and I'll forget that it's there. And that's going to be important later to have that little bit of reflected light under here, a little bit of light poking out. So I'm putting this in right now before I lose it. So if you know that when, you, uh, that when you're painting that, you, that you're prone to, to get a little bit distracted, um, that's OK. You just figure that in and how, and how you approach the canvas. All right, so here's a little bit of light here. I'm overstating it, and then I will blend it later. All right, so there had to be some light here. some light under here. And finish up that bottom. How far did that go? Okay, that, that looks good. We're getting this background covered. I need some straight yellow ochre. So I'm going to take the rest of this pile after I clean my knife and move it over. It's funny because as soon as people saw the reference photo, they assumed that these were my boots. I wish they were. They're so cute. Something that I would wear. God, wasn't that? Who sang that? Angels want to wear my red shoes. God, who was that? If you guys remember who that was that sang that song, Angels want to wear my red shoes, Twitter me, please. It's going to drive me nuts till I remember who it is. <laughs> now I can't get the song out of my head. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to drive the cameraman nuts. On the way over here, he was listening to some rock and roll, and then he, and, then, <laughs> and, and so he's, you know, he's in a great place. And as he's driving up, he, uh, we, we filmed this on a college campus. 
he hears the bells um, on campus and they're playing raindrops keep falling on my head to these nice bell chimes. He cannot get it out of his head. Took him till just about before we started the shoot for him to get it out of his head. And, and of course, now I just brought it up. So that, that's, gonna, that's really going to help. <laughs> Music really influences your work, right? So um, I'm glad I'm, I'm, I'm here and the angels want to wear my red shoes song than the bells. <laughs> God, I wish I knew who it was. Too bad this isn't live where you could call in and tell me. <clears throat> All right, we're getting close to covering this canvas here. I think it needs to be a little lighter right here. Oops, just contaminated. Went into an area I wasn't supposed to with a dirty brush. And sometimes you just have to say, uh-oh, whatever. I did it anyway. All right, so this comes to about right here. And I want a mellow transition here. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Every time, did you see, just see what happened there? <laughs> I had lifted this. <laughs> I had lifted this so that I could paint the bottom. And normally, you should put that back on the easel. <laughs> but no, I forgot. And then I scared the you know what out of me <laughs> when it fell. So... Don't eat this at home. <laughs> I'll put it back. <laughs> hey, if you can't laugh while you're painting, then, um, then it's pretty sad. You know, the other day, I was doing a painting, and uh, by the end of the session, it looked so much worse than when I started. And I know that, you know, that happens to everybody. Sometimes they just have a messy adolescent stage and um, you just have to let them dry and then go back into them later. It's okay. Was I happy? Not really. Um, but I knew I could fix it and parts of the painting session were brilliant and just were a lot of fun. And so I just took what I liked and um, and pretended the ugliness did not happen. <laughs> because really, it was just temporary. All right, I'm covering this. Gonna get my nice little mellow blending brush. And we're gonna go on to the boots. Blending here. Okay, now the thing about mixing this red that could get really tricky with this warm background is that I tend to like a little bit of the little cooler reds to some extent, but this is going to have to be warm. Otherwise, it's going to clash with the background because I'm really uh, using some vibrant color. So we've got this based in. All right, I'll quit playing with that. Okay. We got this based in, and then I'm going to decide what, what kind of reds do I want to use. Well, um, definitely this bright cad red light, that'll be great for the light hand side. And I tend to go more toward the violet for the darks, but I'm going to have to add a little bit of that yellow ochre in there so that it's harmonious. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to mix my three reds first to make sure that they work before I ever get to the canvas. If you ever see me cracking up for no reason, <laughs> well, there's, there's lots of reasons. <laughs> there's lots of reasons. But, um, and sometimes I could just pretend like it's not happening on camera, and other times <laughs> I can't let it go. <laughs> so, so the cameraman gives me this this signal for halfway through the show, and it looks like a, a bad thing from the mafia, you know, the, the way, 
I, I better not show you. But anyway, um, I just thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> All right. At least he's silent about it. Okay. There's the dark. Um, that's a good dark. Ooh, that's beautiful. Uh, let's see. Let's try some light. Ooh. See, I'm tempted to go straight into that red, but I've got to wipe my knife first. I still have the angels want to wear my red shoes in my head. Okay, here's light. Is that, is that a good light? That's pretty good. It's a little bright. It's going to be a little more, uh, the, the interesting thing is the, the red, the, 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 the center of interest is actually going to be more neutral than the background. So this is a reverse of, of what I normally paint because it's all in the shadow. So I'm going to turn that down just a little bit, slightly, just a little bit. That's pretty good. I like it when that works. Okay, so there's that. There's a good medium. Now we'll try some straight purple there and see what happens. And the light part here is almost the same light as what's, what's here. It's not red and, and white. So I'm going to add just move some of this over. A little bit of cad yellow light, tiny bit of cad red light. Oops, because I don't want pink. These are not pink boots. She is not a pink girl. Okay. I'm going to put in the light first because if I don't, I will lose it. Ooh. <laughs> okay. See what happened there? I just flicked paint right there in the shadow. That was an accident. And so. What do you do when that happens? You just take a little knife, pick it up. As I was doing that, see, sometimes more things happen. The more, <laughs> the more you try to correct, something else happens. So then I, my, you know, I got my knuckles in it, and I scraped some over there. You know, it's all fixable. So you just take a little. <laughs> it's getting worse. OK, so you just take. <laughs> Take a little uh, brush. Tidy that up. Same thing with this other thing here. There we go. There. All right, back to where I was. I was getting distracted. All right, so it's light here. We're just putting in some rough light shapes. Where else do I see a lot of light? And over on this end. It's all backlit, so it's on this side. I'm just going to go straight into the background here. So there's some here, some there, and that's it. The other thing I noticed while I was down here, so this contributes to my little ADD painting style, is that, remember that one little spot that I said I'd forget about? I did. So I'm going to just blend this right here real quick. Clean brush. There. That's enough. OK, so we have the lights based in. Let's get some uh, darks put in, and then we'll meet in the middle. See where we need to go. I'm picking a brush that's got, ooh. Okay, I'm usually really good about cleaning my brushes, but uh, obviously I wasn't with this one because <laughs> it is stiff as a board. Um, hopefully, if you put it into uh, some oil again and soap, you should be able to get it out. If not, you could go for the turpentine, the heavy stuff, and, and fix it. I just missed that one altogether. Okay, so where was I? <laughs> now I'm going for the dark. I'm going to use some straight purple just to get it based in. I want some separation here between the two boots. It won't be that purple when I'm done. And a little 
little shaded here. And I will do one just dry, and I'll get a little thinner brush. So I want this one just for drawing in this little little section. Oh, it kind of goes like this. A little seam. I'm not going to put in all the uh, the stitching yet. In fact, I won't do that on this show. Uh, I'll let you see what it's like when it's done. I'm going to just get the boots based in first. So the detail comes later, if at all. Okay, that's good enough for that. Right there. That way I won't lose my place. I do get lost. When I'm in the studio, I'll have the music cranked, get into the song, totally forget where I'm at, where I'm painting. It's okay, have a good time. <laughs> okay. One stroke. You know, it kind of goes like that. All right. I'm going to take this brush that has some of the ochre on it, because that's going to help the whole thing harmonize. And we'll put in the rest of the dark hair. The other thing, you know, why I don't do a lot of backlit scenes is that with backlit scenes you lose a lot of the sense of form and one of my favorite things to do is to make something look three-dimensional so that's that's why I don't typically paint this way a lot but you know what it's fun to change and mix it up a bit okay so we need some a mid middle tone I'm gonna take my dirty brush Put that in there and see, see how far we get. That's nice. Might be a little lighter. Let's see. I'm going to just kind of draw that so I keep that space. Hold that little place for me. So basically, we've got dark, medium, and then light at the edge. And if you get the basics down, you'll get the form. All right, let's see. Do I? Uh, I'm going to finish one boot at a time. Can you believe that? I know some of you are going, I'll believe it when I see it. That's all right. So we'll. <laughs> all right, so we'll move this over, and then I'm going to get some straight CAD red light with a clean brush and go over to the other side. I want a middle size brush so that I have room to do that. This is going to be good. A little bit of medium. This is a little brighter than, um, than I should use, but we will blend into it. So hopefully it'll be okay. If not, we adjust. Typically, I don't put a lot of detail. You know, I, I really do like big, bold statements. But I think that the, uh, the stitching is an interesting part of the composition. So when this dries, 
I will put the stitching in. I'm just not going to do it today. But if you do want to see it later, check in about, I don't know, about a month on my site. It'll be back. It'll be up. Why would it take me a month to get that done? Well, I have 26 paintings in progress right now. <laughs> this is at the end of the queue. Okay, so there's a little bit of red at the edge here. And I'm going to move over to the other side and not futz with this too much, just in the interest of time. I do want to blend that. Okay, let's put some of this red over here too. Some on this side, some over here. And we're good. Getting a little muddy. I'm gonna clean that up a little. You know what I need to put at the very top here is that little bit of light, otherwise I'll lose that. So I'm gonna take my clean brush and wherever I see some light, I'm just gonna throw in a big old blob. That way when I blend it out, I'll be okay. It'll be Shannon proof. All right, and lean a little dark on the edges, so I'm going to get a different brush. Tone that down. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect to start to get a likeness. Oops, I found some more light. So we have light right up here on these little straps. She took them off this way. Man, mine would have been splayed. They were just perfect the way she did. Okay. In progress. You can see I'm not I'm I'm being kind of careful but not over the top. All right, so then it's a little bit lighter on this side. That's enough just to get just to get that based in. Kind of want to finish one boot, so I'm going to add I'm going to add the dark there. I'm going to add the light here and then we'll move over to this side. So we're going to have one that was a little more careful, and the other one's going to be the fastest boot in the West, by the way we get it done. Okay, so how am I going to make this dark black base? Well, I don't have any black here, so I'm going to take some doxazine purple, mix it with uh, a little bit of quinacridone violet, ooh, and thalo turquoise. That's a nice dark, cool dark. I like that. And because it's got the colors, it should be harmonious with the base here. All right, so this, that's nice. I also like that you get a hint of purple. So there's, you know, it's interesting who you get inspired by. I was inspired first when I saw Annette's boots. And um, so I've had these, you know, in mind for actually two or three years, the, thinking about painting them, and I, they've just not, it just hasn't worked out. It didn't have the right, wasn't ready to do them. And then I was on Twitter, and there's this artist that I like, uh, Mark Scantling, and he does these really cool series of pop art boots, and he has interesting shapes of the canvas and all kinds of stuff, and so it, I, I a lot of artists I know get inspired by each other's art. It's just really cool. 
Or you go to the museum or you go to a gallery and you come home just fired up. It's great. I'm doing all the dark at once because <laughs> I forgot I was going to do one boot at a time. <laughs> That's what really happened. I love the violet because it's, it's the opposite of, of uh, the ochre on the color wheel. So they're totally harmonious. They play well together. You don't want colors that are going to fight on the canvas unless you want a lot of tension and a lot of turmoil. I'm not into that. Okay, and then I'm just going to add some light right in the middle. Maybe, maybe this whole thing will be pretty dark. Yeah, change my mind. This will be dark and then This will be a mid-tone. There we go. Got a little more. We want that plane to stand out. That's a nice little violet. Everything's warm here, though. It's definitely a warm painting. And typically, I'm, I'm influenced by the season. So this is not um, a color that's definitely in season. But you know what? It works. It's totally where I think I'm moving into summer. All right, so that goes here. This goes over the top. I'm going to clean up this little edge down here. That's enough for right now. That's good. All right, let's quickly base some of this other stuff in. All right, so if I were going to finish this little area in here, it's actually got quite a bit of red in this white. I know the inside of the boot is white, but I'm going to just take a little dirty brush and make this pink inside. Maybe more of a violet. Because I see a lot of a lot of red in there. I'm keeping the value light. This is cool a little bit cooler over here. Make a little more violet. That's working. And you know what? It just needs some uh, almost straight white. So I got to get a clean brush for that because I've contaminated everything else. And I'll take some straight white hair. And a little here. And then move on. I'm going to get back, step back, and look at, look at the work. It's starting to take shape. It definitely needs to be blended here. Um, so I've got another clean brush. And this just doesn't make sense until you blend it a little bit. Now when you do this, you get rid of a lot of the light that was there. So once this dries, you'll have to kind of reinstate some of that. But that, that's just, that's all right. It's all part of the process. So I'm stepping back a little bit. It's a lot softer. Starting to make a little more sense. There. OK. Yeah, that's just, that's happier. All right, so how can we quickly whip out this other boot? It's, it's not quite so red in the middle. It's got a little more bluish tone to it, so I'm going to add a little blue to that. It's 
got some red, but not, not the same. So I'm adding a little more violet, maybe a little, just a little touch of pink right here. I'm going to really quickly block these in. A little bit of a shadow going on right here. And then it just gets lighter. Finish the strap. It's just a series of tidying things up. Okay, that's working. Now we want to quickly block in this other side. There we go. Oops, I missed a strap here. Am I going to mess with it now? Yeah. Kind of goes right here. I'll just put a little bit of light right over the top. I'm going to rough it in and we can always clean it up later if we have time. All right, so the lightest light, again, is going to be on this side. Just lightly push that in over the top there. I actually picked up some, some uh, white, and the problem with that is it makes things pink. So I really try to avoid that. But you know what? If it gets too chalky, then you, know, you let it dry and go over it. Not the end of the world. All right, so it's a little bit lighter here, light on this side, darker on this side. Ooh, I'm going to go for some of this red over here just because I haven't put it down yet. I love this perline scarlet. How much can we get finished in a short amount of time? The good thing about this show is you really get a, an idea of what, or at least what I can get done in about an hour. Some of you will be a lot faster and, and some be a little more contemplative. Okay, so that's starting to pick up some uh, shape. I really like that um, rough start to that. I'm going to add a little bit of dark on this side here, right over the top. Just brush mix it right over the top. That'll make that little strap show up. You know, on this side, we blended it, made it nice and tidy. This side, we just kind of left it alone. And that was a time thing. But it gives you a good idea of how different directions that you can take it. Add a little bit dark, more dark here. And then basically what I'm going to do is, is uh, just kind of blend this together. Oops. I've got some all over my knuckles. I'm going to have to be careful there. All right, so I'm going to stand back and look at it. Ooh, definitely has potential. Definitely. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to tidy up just in the last little bit. Need the red at the very top. Oops, kind of, kind of missed that shape a little bit. And I just, just killed my little white spot that I had there that was so cool. So, okay, if you're doing a plein air painting and you want to fix that really quick, all you have to do is take some white with your knife Put it right over the top and leave it. That would work. Okay, so what's the deal about this this painting? It's it's uh, a good way 
to try something different. If you got something backlit, then you're not going to see the details in front. Um, I, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. Uh, we did this one a little more finished. The whole thing is as rough or as finished as you want it to be. So, you know, I'd love for you to go check out my site and uh, answer any questions that you have. Twitter me because <laughs> um, we've learned a lot from each other that way. And I just want to thank you for watching Give Your Wall Some Soul. Come visit me at shannongrissom.com. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Shannon Grissom.